Pick up your chairs and just put them around so that you can do a little bit of activity in others. Yeah, I think I think I've uh, worked in almost every uh, western, you know, developed country doing uh, disaster management and rescue operations. I run India's uh, largest private training academy for uh, government forces. So guys like you see, like the NDRF, every police force in the country, they come to our academy every year to learn how to basically do disaster management and then uh, a couple of other police things. So uh, George requested me uh, that, you know, over and beyond just safe riding, I think a little bit of first aid is also important uh, for us to know. And I think I'll cover about three aspects. The first aspect that I, I think we should cover is the worst situation. What hap And almost every kind of situation eventually leads to the person not breathing. So if a person doesn't breathe, remember he's got only about three to four minutes before his brain starts to have permanent damage. And therefore, after that, recovering him is going to be almost impossible. So the first thing that I'll talk to you all today about is no breathing that is, and what to do in that case. And most of you all know, and especially those who've been watching Baywatch know that you need to do CPR. Uh, the second thing that we'll talk about is bleeding because we've got about the, the amount of blood in our body if we lose, uh, we've got about 8 to 10 liters of blood in our body if we lose about 15 to 20 percent of it, it becomes very, very serious for us. So it's important. Second thing, if there is person no, no breathing, second thing to cover is to stop bleeding. And the third thing that I'll also cover, uh, especially in the case of road uh, injuries, is managing spi uh, spinal injuries. So managing head, neck and back injuries. Because I've seen a lot of uh, cases where the rider or has had an accident and a simple act like removing his helmet has been potentially uh, has potentially led to you know permanent damage and for the rest of his life. So it's important that we also manage uh, an incident in the right kind of manner. Like George has been telling us this morning, uh, the Indian road is akin to a faluda. It's got everything. And you share a road with uh, everything from a cow, a dog, to a super bike, to a trailer and we all share it together. And just because there's so many of us, there's a lot more in that mix uh, compared to you know countries like in the UK or in uh, Europe or somewhere where you know you still have pretty much spaces, uh, you have spaces to avoid uh, a certain collision. So the first thing that one must know is in case, and we're going to do a little simulations here so we'll uh, do a couple of activities also. Uh, the first thing that we should know is now forget safe riding we've had an incident somebody has fallen off and what what do you do then first thing that you need to remember and I'll just make it simple for you remember the four A's the four A's are A awareness be aware of your surroundings be aware of your environment be aware if there are trucks on the road if you see somebody who's crashed out in the middle of the road don't stop your bike and just start go running over to him. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of where you are. Second, assessment. Assess the situation. Plan what you're supposed to do and then get on to doing it. The third is do whatever you're supposed to do and do it well. So action. The third A is action. And the last A is aftercare. From the incident to the hospital is the most important thing for you. So, ensuring aftercare is also a very, very important thing to ensure that that rider was taken safely from the incident site to the hospital and whatever is required. A lot of times, there's a lot of panic. People come and stop in the middle of the road and say, hey, you know what, I'm a doctor, I know what to do. But remember, uh, rely on your own instincts and those instincts should be, like I've told you, A, if he's not breathing, you need to do something about it. B, if he's bleeding, something needs to be done about that. And the third uh, is managing shock. That means in case, so what happens to the body is in case too many bad things happen to us, like a computer, you overload it, we go into reboot mode. 
problem is if we don't reboot then we shut down so managing shock emotional shock shock due to loss of bleeding uh, loss of fluids loss of blood shock due to uh, excessive uh, you know uh, excessive hormonal release that happens because of uh, a very high tense situation like an accident these are things that puts your body into shock and these are things that need to be controlled okay so let's let's make it very simple can i have that mannequin over there and i can i have a volunteer yes please i got a so i need a volunteer first if whoever is going to volunteer monish is there okay monish awesome. you need to light up yes if you don't mind can you go up a little aage thoda sa Yeah. Anyway, anyway, just lie down. Yeah. So, remember, here's Monish who's had an accident. First thing that we need to remember: what What are the first things that I spoke to you about? Awareness. Awareness. So, be aware of the situation. See where he is. In case you're in a group, and in case someone can take the lead, and usually it is the first person on site who can take the lead, it is best that someone takes the lead. If you have five brains working, no one's working. If you have one brain working, everyone else is doing it. Makes things easier. So if you have someone, I say, hey, you know what? Why don't you control traffic? Why doesn't someone ensure that we call the ambulance? These are two first things that you need to look at as soon as you come over to the side. Don't rush to Monish because Monish is already in trouble. As a first aider, I know it will sound ruthless, but your safety is first because Monish is already in trouble now. So Monish is now secondary compared to you. Making sure that you are safe and you don't have two injuries instead of one is very important, right? So your safety comes first. Ensuring that the scenario or the incident site is as safe as possible is very very important. So again, going back, awareness. Come on site. Somebody manage traffic. Somebody call the ambulance. Then I approach Monish. Over. Just see in case there is any kind of danger to him. If in case that we have managed traffic, then Munish does not need to be moved to the side of the road. Munish can stay in the in the same part of the road as long as we are managing traffic. If someone is managing traffic, we don't need to move Munish because as soon as you move him, you're going to do something. Maybe he's and most likely he's hurt his head, neck, and back. And if you injure him, you could potentially cause even worse damage. So if he if it is not risk to life. like if there is a bike burning yes pick him up and move him out of that situation as soon as possible but if there is no risk to life we don't move monish at all right so the first thing that we do is awareness and then we get down on our knees say we assess the situation so we see for ourselves whether he's got basic signs of life so what are the signs of life breathing breathing, breathing. pulse, pulse. pulse. okay Okay, so let's uh, since you said pulse, I'll uh, let's do a small little activity. Put your hand fingers on your check check pulse, however you like to check it. I'll give you ten seconds. So ready? Start. Who who can say it? who's got a watch in the hand? <coughs> just just give us a start. <laughs> you can't see. Glasses. Okay, ready? Yeah. Start. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell us when to stop. Um, what time? Ten seconds. Stop. How many found their pulse? I think. Okay, so there was about there was about twenty people in here. One, two, three, four. How many found? So about five, six, <coughs> seven found their pulse. Okay. How much was your pulse? Uh, ninety. Sorry. Nine zero. Ninety. Ninety. No. How much was it for? Uh, ten seconds. So nine. No, nah, sorry. Uh, you didn't find the pulse. I didn't find <laughs> the pulse, but the the, the counting was wrong. You didn't count. Okay, how much was yours? I didn't count. You didn't count. How much was yours? Kitan? Perfect. So pulse is not a sign of life because your heart stops beating before your brain stops working. So pulse does not mean that the person is dead. Okay. Everyone who saw Bollywood movies and said check pulse, don't check pulse. Three signs of life. Someone said breathing. Awesome. Second sign of life. And the second and third ones are actually very easy. Come on. Eyes. No. Very simple. Yeah, yeah. I think you can tell. Perfect. So the second sign of life is actually 
uh, speech. So if I speech, uh, movement, and breathing. If he talks, it is that he's alive. If he moves, he's alive. And if he breathes, he's alive. Right? So many times a person can't move, but he can talk. So many times he can't talk, but he's moving. And of course, the third time you have the person not moving or talking, but he's breathing. So these are the three signs of life. Speech, movement, or breathing. So you first, as soon as I'm on the ground, I've checked the situation, I can get to work. Right? Remember, as soon as uh, we're on our knees next to Monish and we're doing our assessment, we first check A, if he's got basic signs of life. So, in that, I'll uh, teach you a very simple doctor that you all need to know about. That's called Doctor ABC. D R A B C. D we already did. Check danger, remove danger. R stands for three guesses. Come on. Response. Check for response. If he's responding well, what are we what are we going to do? How are we going to check for response? Perfect. Hi, can you hear me? No response. See if he's moving. No response. If you can hear me, hold my hand. If you've got no response, and then get down on your knees and check for breathing. And you're checking for breathing, see if his chest is rising, and at the same time, see if you can feel or hear his breathing. Right? So you look at whether you can see his chest or you can feel his breathing or not. Right? You check for response, no response. The next one that I told you about is Doctor A. What? A stands for airway. I'm, I'm teaching your CPR. So A stands for airway. What happens is, as soon as a person is unconscious, there's one muscle in your mouth that completely loses all control. What muscle? Your tongue. Your tongue. Your tongue. tongue. Exactly. Your tongue can roll back and sit on top of your airway, therefore automatically choking you. So the first thing that you want to do, in case he is not breathing, is check his airway. Now imagine this that he's not, I'm simulating that he's not got any spinal injury, so I'll tell you how to clear the airway and then we can do a couple of other ones. So don't worry about it, I'm not going to chase you. <laughs> <laughs> so you open his mouth using a grip like this, a pistol grip. One finger ahead and one, so you open his mouth, you look in case you require, you can adjust or tongue, you don't need to pull it out, but you can just adjust his tongue. A lot of times there's bleeding in the mouth. A lot of times there could be a little bit of fluids that has come out and just suffocated him. So what you can do is put his hand over his chest, support his knee, uh, support his neck, support his uh, uh, waist and slowly roll him over. Don't roll yourself over. At the same time supporting his neck at all times. Open his airway and you can clear all this airway. At the same, after that you can put him back down and again see if breathing has started. Same way, see if his chest is rising or see if you can feel for breathing. If you can't feel for breathing, then something needs to be done about it. So, you can get up now. I can still do it on you, but... <laughs> so, what do we do in case he's not breathing, right? We've cleared his airway and we now need to give him CPR or her CPR. How do we do it? Tilt the head, pinch the nose and give him two big long breaths, so like this. So you give him two breaths, at the same time <coughs> you can, these two breaths are just to make sure that the person, the amount of oxygen that you have left in your breath, you are giving him so that you can keep the brain alive. Okay? If you can't give breaths if the person's face is too damaged, no problem, forget about breathing. You can get on to compressions immediately. So how many people here know CPR? Anyone know CPR? You know CPR? Perfect. So how do we do compressions? Perfect. So in the in the center of the chest, between the nipples, on the center of the chest, not below, center of the chest, give him 30 compressions and two, bre uh, two breaths and do three cycles per minute. So what happens usually is that 
a person who is not uh, normally you you've got your your uh, heartbeat is about 60 to 100 br uh, beats a minute so you're trying to do the same thing for the victim so between the nipples you can put both your hands over each uh, above each uh, other lock your fingers and with the palm of your hand compress straight down so 30 30 compressions you're going to count with me okay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. Why did I count like that? Is because counting 11, 12, 13, 14 makes me lose momentum. So 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 1 to 30. It ensures that I keep momentum. So again, what do I do? Let's, let's just quickly uh, go from start to beginning. D stands for? Danger. Danger, perfect. So check danger, remove danger. Response. R stands for? Response. 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 Check for response. How do we check for response? Breathing. 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 Movement. 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 Speech. 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 Or talking. No response. What do we do? We check the airways. Perfect. Airways. Clear the airway in case there's any fluid or blood. Clear the airway. After that? If there is no uh, clear airway, Check him first, support his neck, support his back, and roll him over and see if his clear, is clear. Perfect. After that? Should so you know, uh, then we go get into... B, check for breathing. Again, just check for breathing. If breathing has started, no problem. Or else C stands for? CPR. CPR, okay? So 30 compressions, 2 breaths, 30 compressions, 2 breaths. Right? And how much folks you have to... Perfect. You, when you do CPR, remember one thing very simply, push hard, push fast. People will tell you you'll break his rib, that's okay, you're saving, him, you're saving his life. Your lungs are not like a balloon, they're not going to get punctured by a rib and completely deflate. They're going to continue to work. So breaking a rib is no problem. If he's had a chest impact and you're worried that, oh, if I give him CPR, it will hurt him. He's going to die anyways, in case you don't do CPR, you'd rather, <coughs> if I was in your position or if you were in my position and you were down and out, would you like me to give you CPR? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So put yourself in that guy's situation and say if, if I'd like me to be given CPR, I'm sure he, your fellow rider would like the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to make groups of two, uh, uh, pairs of two and we're going to practice D, R, A, B, C on our own. Okay? It's better than doing it uh, and then we'll, we can swap. Right? Is that okay? Come on. Awesome. So let's make pairs of two. Everyone stand up, push the chairs to the back. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you're with him. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Everyone's got two? Yes. Awesome. So the first thing that we do is what is B? So before you get down on your knees, everyone stand up. Everyone stand up, step back. What are the possible dangers on the road? Traffic. Traffic. Burning. Maybe something burning. Burning or something. What else? See that the elevator moves off the car or something. Correct. So in case if he's on a potential area where he can actually go off the road or go down the valley or something, that could be potential danger. So what do we do? Check danger. Remove danger. Now on our knees. Right. R stands for response. So everyone check response. Shake him properly. Don't shake him. Come on loudly. No, okay. Yeah, check for breathing at the same time and check the response. No response? What's the name? No response. Clear the airway. Check the air. See, look, look at this, look at this, look at me. Pistol grip, grip like this on the chin. Gently open the mouth and clear anything if it's possible. Right. If not, tilt them slowly on the side. Victims don't help them. Nice. Come, come forward, come forward. Rest, rest his neck on your knees. Perfect. Yeah, slowly, gently. Perfect. Remember? Yep, okay, clear the airway again. Place him back down. And see if he started breathing. No breathing? 
What do we do? We give 30 compressions. So don't compress hard on your body. But I just want you to get the positioning right, okay? You get 30 compressions and when I say, when I say you give a breath, what is So when I say you give a breath, you give a breath like this. Don't kiss your body, so. Right? So I want you to practice that yourself, right? Okay, come on, let's go. Ready? 30 compressions. First two breaths, then First two breaths, yes. What about taking hand position? Don't worry about it. That's okay. Because if I want to push. Oh, that's okay. You can put this. You can just push his hand in. That's okay. No problem. Push his hand with your knees. That is the point. Here knees. That's immaterial. Yeah, that's actually. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Just push his hand. Push him forward. And you need to come a little higher. You can go a little lower. Buddy. Okay, ready? So, next thing is two breaths. First, so we give two breaths. Long breaths. And when we give a breath, remember, we don't do, hmm? we do, long breath, okay? Till the head also. Yeah, when you give breath, you pinch the nose till the head, up, right? Absolutely. Why do we pinch, why do we till the head up? Put your chin to your chest, open your mouth and breathe. And now look up, open your mouth and breathe. Perfect, can you, you understand why you can till the head, right? So. You've given two breaths, now 30 compressions. Center of the chest, your shoulders over the body. Put your knees down. Yeah. Go straight. Using the palm, yeah, nice. Center of the chest, very good. Come forward, Ketan. Again, ah, perfect. Don't bend your knees. Okay, unlike, unlike George's, uh, don't bend your elbows, sorry. Unlike George's riding lesson, here, your body should be stiff. So, Everyone elbows as hard as tight as possible, shoulders over the body. Ready? 30 compressions gently. Ready? One. Everyone count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again. Again, two breaths. Uh, two breaths, right? Yeah. You pinch the nose, right? Yeah. Perfect. Pinch the nose, tilt the head, and two breaths. Okay. Again, okay. thirty compressions. Yeah. Thirty compressions. Two more breaths and last cycle. Come on. Yes. I am going to. I'll, I'll tell you how to remove the helmet. But yes, the first thing is that if you can, if you don't want to change anything, don't change it. Remember, breathing is not as important as compressions. When you are compressing, you are compressing the lungs and you are compressing the chest. So automatically you are almost simulating breathing and you are uh, almost simulating heart beating. So if you can't breathe, if you can't give those breaths, forget about it. Your, your body can store about the oxygenated blood in your body can store for anything up to 10 to 12 minutes. It's very important to take that oxygenated blood and send it up to his brain. If you can't give breathing and if you are having trouble, leave it. Start compressing immediately. Try to get 100 compressions a minute and you should do bet more than better. It is physically tiring to do CPR. So if you have a buddy, you can swap. So I am doing say 3 cycles or 4 cycles. I can't do it anymore, swap. Bring somebody in. But while you are compressing, Talk to him that I am getting tired, next cycle you are going to be ready for it. So he says, and why do you count loudly? Because he is seeing what you are doing. So you can say, hey, you know what, do what I was doing. And take that over. CPR is only 30% as effective as normal, uh, you know, your body, uh, heart beating or breathing. So remember when you are doing CPR, do it well. Focus on what you are doing, keep your elbows straight, body over the victim and compress down as hard as possible. Don't worry about, you know, not uh, breaking his rib or uh, injuring him or anything like that. And again, last thing is get his positioning right. It should not be on the dummy. Feel the hard part of your chest and that's exactly where you need to be. Okay?
Any questions? Uh, in every bank, we see that there is a first aid kit given inside. Yes. But many people don't keep on checking the expiry date of it. Yes. So is it important to check it before every ride? It is possible, but uh, have you really opened the first aid kit that the manufacturer gives? So what does it help? God, uh, first aid, uh, avoid with the zip. Correct. Uh, so all that is very superficial stuff. Stuff that is not going to save anyone's life. Maybe the gauze will because you might be able to stop a little bit of bleeding because of it. But like when I ride, especially on a big li uh, ride, I carry a, blow a proper proper high, high spec first aid kit. It's good to invest in a good first aid kit. If it's a good investment because it will help you sometime or the other. Don't depend on what the, the manufacturer gives you. His job is to give you a better bike than a first aid kit. So it's, it's important like you invest in gears it, or gear, it's important that you invest in a decent first aid kit so for yourself. Can you suggest something that we can buy? I'll put it on the table. I'll put it on the table. Maybe, but price is also not much, 500 to 600 bucks. Not much. They start breathing, right? That's when you stop compression. Yes, so that's when you stop compression. The compression, I'm going to need one more volunteer. Can I have one more volunteer? Come. So as soon as he stops breathing, if his spine can be managed, and that's why I won't recommend that to you for a road injury, but for you know other kind of injuries, this is what we do. If his spine can be managed, we put him into what is called the recovery position. Recovery position is pretty simple. It's got seven easy steps. Step one, arm to the side. Step two, arm over his ear, his hand over his ear. Step three, bend his knee. Step four, roll him over gently to the side. Step five, put his knee in a 90 degree angle. Step six, open his mouth. And step seven, tilt his head to the back. So what happens, remember this position? How, what does this position look like? Sleeping. Exactly, you will sleep in this position every day. Most comfortable position and also in case he vomits or something, the vomit will not flow back in but it will flow out. Right? But again for a road injury victim, I will not recommend that you put him in a recovery position. Reason being is you want to maintain his head, neck and back in a straight angle. Right? Let's get Thank you, sir. So, the next thing that I talk to you about is bleeding. What do you do in case someone is bleeding? In case someone is. I just have no question. So, how often do you repeat this till what point? How often would you like me to repeat it till? I mean, as far as somebody starts bleeding. So, you keep doing it. Absolutely. Thing. Same thing. Right? Same question. I'm going to put it back to you. How often would you like me to do CPR on to you? Yeah. Yeah. As often as possible till I start breathing. So, but it happens like if you keep on doing the breathing, it will come back. It will come back. And there are many, many situations where people have worked on him for 45 minutes. He still not started breathing. Take him to the uh, hospital. They've given him defibrillation, and they come back to you and said, "Thank you very much, but if you hadn't done this CPR, he wouldn't be alive right now." It's that accumulation of all the work that was done before from the incident to the hospital that actually eventually results in the guy surviving. Can you so don't what give up. What happens when you do a CPR? What does I explained to you. Same thing. There's oxygenated blood in your body which is coming from your lungs and your heart. You're doing, <coughs> you're simulating that same uh, kind of process. When you're compressing, you're compressing down. Your heart is in the center. Only Shahrukh Khan's heart is on the left. Everyone else's heart is in the center and your lungs, when you compress down, you're compressing down, you're compressing on the heart, the heart is pushing blood out. You're compressing down, you're compressing on the lungs, you're allowing the lungs to pull air inside, push air outside. So you're doing the same thing and you're actually simulating a normal, you know, breathing and heart breathing process. That's why it's called cardio pulmonary resuscitation or CPR. So cardio, heart, pulmonary, lungs, resuscitation, restarting both of them. Right? Any any further questions? So I'll get to I'll, I've got only 10 minutes. I'm going to rush. Uh, the next thing is that we talk about if the person is bleeding. Uh, bleeding. Remember, if you've got about 8 to 10 liters of blood in your body, and you start losing about 2 to 3 liters, you are in a serious serious situation. So what can happen? In, 
and mostly will happen in case of a road injury mm. is severe severe bleeding and especially in the case of a potential case where you have an amputation for example a certain limb has run over uh, been run over by another car or something like that then it will cause what is called arterial bleeding so you have your arteries which are directly connected to your heart and if they are losing blood they lose blood faster and they are losing oxygenated blood and the risk of someone going into shock because of loss of blood is very very high so the three things that you remember uh, for stopping bleeding are pressure 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 <coughs> first kind of pressure that you do is local so can you come to the center i'll use you as a volunteer what's your name rahul rahul so rahul is bleeding first thing that i do is local pressure says arm has been cut first thing that i do is if i have a plastic bag or if i have a pair of gloves in my first aid kit i wear that so as or if you have your own riding gloves amazing don't need to take them off take a handkerchief or pad or something that you can and hold on to the wound and hold it as tight as possible <coughs> so first thing that you do is just hold the pressure point just press down on it and create local pressure right the second kind of pressure that you can create is called arterial pressure that means so while i can have his body holding on to the wound as tight as possible what i can do then is go on to a point of where his artery flows over his bone and make a tie a tourniquet or tie something as tight as possible what is risky about <coughs> this is that if i don't release this Right enough. So, what is risky about this is if I tie it too tight, especially with a handkerchief, I tie it too tight, and I keep it like this, and it takes me one hour to reach the hospital. This arm might have gangrene setting in. Gangrene means it will start literally decomposing because there's no blood reaching it. So, if I'm tying a tourniquet, it is important that this needs to be. released every 15 to 20 minutes to allow some blood flow so that the limb can remain alive but if his leg for example has been run over which is potentially a thing that can happen just doing local pressure on a big wound like that is not going to work you are going to have to tie a serious serious tourniquet especially even waiting for all, and it is going to be anywhere close from 15 minutes to 45 minutes before the ambulance arrives and if you can't stop bleeding at that point you're going to lose your body so it is important forget gangrene tighten forget gangrene you tighten it at that point of time immediately if you can loosen it every 15 to 20 minutes go ahead and loosen it also right any question on that and the third kind of pressure for example let's do the same kind of simulation on his foot so we will we'll take his right leg Perfect. So the third kind of simulation that we we'll, uh, do is need to raise <coughs> the limb above the level of the heart. Can you, Manoj, can you get up? Rahul, Rahul, sorry. On, on your lie down. So most likely he'll be on the floor. You let raise the limb above the level of the heart. So it becomes tough for the heart to pump blood into that. So three kinds of pressures. One, local, local. pressure. So hold down on 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 any kind of injury as possible. Third, tie a tourniquet over a potential artery. So where do you have arteries? Everywhere that the artery runs over a bone are pressure points. Where this is a pressure point. Your elbows are pressure points. Your wrists are pressure point. Your shoulders are pressure points. Your your uh, 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 collar bones are pressure points. Your groin are pressure points. Your knees are pressure points. Similarly, your ankles are pressure points. at that point or even on the thigh you can tie a cloth or for example spider web or whatever you have as tightly as possible to prevent blood flow the kind of bikes we ride and the kind of roads we ride on it is if we have a injury it is mostly going to be a very minor one if you are going to have gear on or it's going to be a very major one 
So it's better to factor for the major one. And in case that is the concern, forget about how bad it is going to hurt him. You're going to save his life because you're going to stop blood flow. Right? So what do we do in case of uh, bleeding? Three, three P's. What are the three Localized P's? Pressure. Local, local pressure. Arterial pressure. Arterial pressure. Gravitational. And gravitational pressure. Pressure on raising it above the level of the heart. Thank you, Rahul. Any questions? No questions? Last point that we'll do is I need a helmet. I need somebody to give me a helmet so that we can work on uh, practicing how to take a helmet off. Okay. Yes. Such as? Come up with this. You just work on local pressure. So if it is, for example, in the core of the body, you just work on local pressure. Because you want that uh, blood to stop coming out of the heart. And if it is, for example, below his level of the heart, you make him sit up gently so that it becomes, uh, sorry, uh, uh, lay, uh, lay down and gently and put a support under his waist so that it becomes a little tougher for the heart to. Just if you can't do any tonic, that's okay, no problem. Tonic is most. No option. No option, nothing. You rush him to the hospital as fast as possible. We are first aiders. We are not doctors, right? And one of the most important things is an amazing piece of first aid equipment that every rickshaw wala carries. What is that? Stretcher. <laughs> Pani ka bottle. Do not give him anything to eat or drink. In case of any injury, our first tendency is Pani lo, Pani pee. Correct? Everyone does that? Do not do that. Because in case he's got internal injuries, especially hemorrhage to the brain or something like that, Giving him water is you are going to complicate the scenario. Giving him something to eat, giving him sugary drinks is you are going to complicate it and make it worse. So if you don't know what's happened, do not give him anything to eat or drink. There are only two situations where I would recommend that you give the person something to eat or drink. Is if he has fainted and not had a catastrophic fall from a vehicle because of either heat exhaustion or hypothermia. If it is heat exhaustion and not a heat stroke, that means just fatigue and just fallen down. Say you have stopped for a for a you know a fueling break, and he's just come over to the side of the road and he's got uh, fallen to the side of the road, completely exhausted because of the heat. Give him something sugary and sweet with a little bit of salt to <coughs> drink. Or in case you are riding in Leh and and the person is undergoing hypothermia, like he's really really cold and give him something sugary and sweet and warm to drink. But those are the only two situations that I will recommend something to be given if and only if you know that he has not had a crash because of that. If he has a crash, you still don't give him anything to eat or drink. Right? Any questions? Yeah. Correct. So that in cases of the writer being stuck, so again, if the rider was alive, and if you can move the vehicle safely, yes, it's going to cause him some amount of anguish and pain. But that's the only option you have to rush him to the hospital. Uh, if he, uh, if the person is and you can't move the rider safely, there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to have to stand there and actually support. Him as much as possible. So uh, there is no thumb rule answer that I can give you to that situation. Uh, there is always ifs and buts. Okay. Uh, we will come up with an accident. Uh, uh, Mahabharat Shop. Some uh, super like rivals, 15 meters years back. The tall guy like him. Stop. And he slipped at around 150 plus feet. Uh, and he hit the boulder. And he didn't have any training. So we picked him up. Five guys picked him up. Put, it, uh, put him on the, this uh, Suzuki Go van and the Vaichara guy was jumping in that the van till he came to Mangeshka hospital. So, we didn't know that uh, here was so awesome that doctor ko was surgical is cutting over. Now so, one piece say, and uh, we didn't know okay, what, how to pick him because he was very big guy, big, strong, heavy and wo, van mein kaise bhi nahi and kya I mean, he was giving Gali's left hand but hat lagaya to and kon tha kon sa group tha we didn't know 
I'll give you one example. अगर person चिल्ला रहा है, or if you have like a major accident, uh, and you have two or three riders fallen down, <coughs> if the guy is shouting, giving galis, go to him last. <laughs> He's normal. <laughs> go to the guy who's not moving and who's not breathing or who's silent. That is the guy who needs you more than him. That guy screaming his lungs out, perfect. He's, he's okay. He's breathing, he's lungs out. You know, speech, movement, and breathing, all three working. <laughs> Go to the guy who is not giving you speech, movement, and breathing. Keep that, keep that focus very seriously. Like, I mean, we also do a lot of water, water rescue, but we, we tell the same opposite in water. We say that we say that if a guy is not moving, versus the guy is, for example, screaming and drowning. Go to the guy who is screaming and drowning first, because your chance of saving a life is maximum. Whereas on the road or in land, it is exactly the opposite. If the guy is screaming and shouting, he is most likely okay. Go to the guy who is doing least amount of tamasha. That is the guy you need to focus on. See, what, one, point. Uh, one more thing I have. How to lift? Because I, I'll, I'll, tell you how to lift. I'll tell you lifting. My brother had a very serious accident uh, like few years back. And there was a head trauma that he had. It was an internal bleeding hemorrhage. Right. So one thing we had to make sure, and he was in the ambulance. Luckily, we got to him on time. We, we took him in the ambulance. The only thing I did, which I think what turned out to go was right, or I did not let him faint. Absolutely. So that's. Oh, you didn't let him sleep. I did not let him sleep. So Absolutely. He, you know, slapping him, you know, at that point in time, just to make sure that he doesn't. Correct. That is the only thing. So that's one thing that. Very important. I, and <coughs> I, I'm glad that we are all sharing experiences <coughs> because somewhere down the line, you, every one of us has seen some kind of a catastrophic event. So uh, it's important that we share experiences and learn. And these both experiences are very important. So I want to ask you that George's riding gear is full gear, one piece gear. So much that he is where can I say? Correct. Where is he? And the guy is so big, we didn't know where to lift. Correct. Lift because he was so big. Five, six people were lifting him, trying to make it as small. So first of all, so once you have got breathing out of the way, saying he is breathing, your second focus is stopping bleeding. So stopping bleeding, sometimes you really don't know. I had an accident where. And it was my fault. Uh, I was riding uh, down from that uh, road that comes from Gold Gym to NIBM Road near NIBM, and I was on my pulsar. I was about 16 years old. One guy spat out of his window <coughs> and spat onto me. So immediate, what's your immediate reaction? And you look at him and give him a gali like, kya chupi, kya karna? right? But in that one movement, looking right. My bike was already on a trajectory for two laborer women who were walking. Uh, crossing. You know, not crossing, they were just walking on the left hand side of the road. When <laughs> I walk on the side of the road, I usually walk on the right so that I can see oncoming traffic. But people think traffic rules are walk on the left side of the road. So they were walking on the left side of the road and that was their only mistake. But my bike was already pointed there and it was beyond the point of saving. I ran into them and same situation, one was screaming her lungs out. The other one was quiet. So I got the one who was scream, screaming to the side of the road and we were checking the one who was quiet and she didn't say, I mean she was conscious for sure. But then when we lifted her sari up, we saw that her entire leg had been severed. So literally just, held it, the bike just ran into her. So it had literally holding, her leg was being held by a little bit of muscle, that's it. That the shin had completely gone off. But that means that it was seriously, seriously bleeding. So not the, immediately as soon as you do an accident, and it is important if the person is breathing to start checking the rest of the parts of the body by checking for simple, simple pain stimulation. Stimulation. So you say you you press down on the guy's body. <coughs> come, come in the center. Lie down again. Careful. So same thing. You do pain stimulation. Now you, person's awake. What's your name? Samir. Samir. So Samir, can you hear me? Yeah. Samir, I'm going to check your body down. Let me know Very if good. it hurts you anywhere. So you keep checking. Gently press. And then you do a head to toe assessment. And again, come back from toe to head assessment. At every point of time, you say, I'm going to press and tell me if it hurts. Same thing your doctor does. Your doctor says the same thing, right? I'm going to press it and tell me if it hurts. You say, yeah. Oh, now I know what hurts. So, okay. George. You're wearing a full suit, but it hurts you in the chest. I'm going to open your suit and I'm going to check if there is any kind of breathing. Uh, this. So you open it. Don't be afraid if it's a 50,000 rupee suit. If it needs to be cut, it needs to be cut. So 
it's important or if he's wearing a liner or something like that, if it needs to be ripped off, it needs to be ripped off. So you unzip him for example, cut through this and see if it is a bruise mark, if it's a cut or any kind of injury that is possible. But simple, head to toe assessment, but head to toe assessment only after sorting out breathing. Right? So, since you lying down, we will continue with you in the air. Yeah, put your helmet on. Penna, Kadal, Uber Bad Kibel. When you come over to an injury, especially for a rider with a helmet on, you always suspect that he's got a head neck back injury. Okay. He's most likely crashed at a speed of 50 plus and at that speed, it is best to suspect be safer than sorry. So you treat him always like a potential spinal injury unless and otherwise proven not. So he goes to the hospital, they do x-rays, MRIs, whatever is required and oh his head neck back was okay, <coughs> perfect. But you did and took all the precautions that were required to make sure that he was alright. There was a guy, he was an Air Force wing commander. Uh, the guy was riding his RX-100 and ran into an Air Force barricade many many years ago. The uh, first thing the guys did was remove the helmet. His third vertebrae pierced into his uh, uh, spinal cord, severing everything below it. So he he was quadriplegic, uh, paraple uh, yeah quadriplegic, and everything below his neck he didn't have control of. He did a couple of activities, did drawing from his mouth and all that. That's why he came into the limelight in Pune. But the the biggest story was people tried to take out his helmet, ऐसे करके निकाल दिया. You heard the entire spine, the puncture the uh, you know damage the artery, uh, damage the spinal cord, and that was so you you saved him. But you gave him a pathetic life after that. So, I mean, there are times he must have thought that I wish I wasn't saved yet. At least I, I wouldn't be here. So, the first thing that you need to do is very, very careful about <coughs> handling somebody who's got a helmet on and being able to take it out in a proper way. If you, again, if he is not breathing, I take off the helmet. If he's breathing, I won't take off the helmet. Okay. If it's not required, do not change the status quo. He's already okay, he's breathing, he's on his back. First thing for a rider who's, who's had a major, major accident. Suppose I'm riding and I see a guy crash out in front of me. I've seen how catastrophic that incident was. First thing I go over to him, his, his instinct is what? To get up. I make sure, no, you stay down. Stay down, we manage traffic. Let him be this, just the same way it is. So in case he's breathing, you don't need to take out his helmet, right? So first thing we'll practice is how to take a guy who's already breathing, right? So that we or so that we can move him to the side of the road in a in a very very comfortable manner, right? I need about four to five uh, volunteers. Can someone come in? You'll need to sit down so others can see. Two more on this side, and one at the head. So I'll come to the head. No, so if he's breathing, this is if he's breathing, you come to this side. Come to the shoulder. the CPR. If he So the first thing as soon as we reach a situation, what do we do? D check danger, remove danger. Response. Next, check for response. Check for response. Hi. Okay, perfect. There is response. What do we do? We say stay in that position. Don't change the position. The most experienced guy or somebody who knows first aid and now because I've spoken to you, even you all can take that kind of position. First person that actually goes is make sure he stabilizes the head. So what I will do is I will hold both my thumb to my uh, index finger at the shoulder and hold his head between my forearms. So I'll stabilize his head. 
okay. at all times. So now there is no risk of his head bobbing because the only position where his there is movement is at the neck. The spine lesser movement at the head lesser movement. The maximum movement is there at the neck. So we make sure we stabilize the neck, right? The next thing that we do is we we'll put the arms inside. So we'll cross the arms in, right? Get the legs together. I'm going to teach you how to lift him, okay? And we're going to lift him together. Everyone, put their hands under. Just under. Don't lift him up. Just put your just put your hands under, right? One leg up, one leg down. Don't lift him. Don't lift him on my count, okay? So I'm holding the neck. And you all are just holding him there. We all do it together as a synchronized effort, right? When I count one, so look at me talking to my team also. I'm talking to them so that everyone knows what we are doing. I'm briefing them. Very clear. You do the same thing in an incident. Listen, this is what we are going to do, and then everyone follow me, right? So when I <coughs> when I uh, count one, two, three, we gently lift him, right? Okay, everyone okay? Everyone okay? Yep. Yeah, perfect. So one, two, three. Gently lift together. You see, I was lift, 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 lift all the way. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Perfect. So see, I've always I've ensured that the neck is straight. No any motion. No movement at all, and everyone lifting together. Okay. Walk two steps to my right. To my right. Two steps to my right. Right. And gently one. Two, three, down. Slowly, 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 down, all the way. So we move him to the side of the road, right? Make sure it is a synchronized effort. So I want somebody to take on the role of some, me at the head and practice this once more. Same way. Ready? Yeah. Three, one, two, 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 one, go. Slow, slow. Very good. Very slow. Amazing. Perfect. Okay. Go left, left go this way. Left two step one. I'm floating in the air. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slowly down. One, slow, slow. Thank you. I'll, I'll show you. Do we have a plank or something like that? That's okay. No, don't bother about it. It's okay. So, same thing. Captain or the guy who's most experienced at the head, right? First thing that we do, stabilize the neck, right? I want both of you all to lean over and grab his clothes. And y'all, cross <coughs> your arms. One arm here, one arm here. Grab his clothes. What Grab his clothes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When I count, y'all will gently roll him upwards. Okay. okay. So that something can be slid underneath. Okay. 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 So on my count, gently. All right. Okay. No speed. One, two, three. Up, up, so up, up. Pull, pull, right? pull, 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 pull higher. That's it. So now we've given him a position. It's called a log roll. We put whatever is required underneath, hmm. and then gently one, two, three, down, 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 down. George, down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right. Same thing. Same position. Do a log roll. Lift him up. Slide something underneath, and then when you slid, uh, slid something underneath, easier to lift up. How to stabilize the leg? Position. Same way. This way. You hold him with your forearms and. Hold the shoulders like this, and use use your fingers also to grasp onto the guy. Right now, the last thing that I'm going to teach y'all is how to get the helmet off, which is again very very important. First thing that the experience. Sorry, what happened? No, no, nothing, nothing. I want to add on to something after you finish. Oh, the parts of the helmet that can yeah. be ripped off. Okay, so uh, okay, I'll just pitch into this. If you see any rider wearing showy, they are very snug fit mm -hmm. helmets. Do not try to uh, you know get the show yet or there. There are something called the emergency exit. You will find these red tags there. Just pull these tags out. Correct. These tags come out from here. These tags come out from there. The helmet becomes hollow. And remove the helmet and put it on the side. Yeah. So mo this most happens. most pro helmets would have a red tag on it, uh, and you can just pull that red tag. Most most of the ex and if it's a super biker, ninety nine percent he's got a helmet that is more than five thousand bucks. So <laughs> he's got. <laughs> so he's got a good helmet. Cheese, you have to be careful when you're pulling it out. Also. Yeah. So, so you've got to be very helmet. careful. Again, the way he took <coughs> it off, you you be careful in taking it off. But at the same so time, hold the helmet and I think. Yeah. Always, always, always stabilize the head. So when I want to remove the helmet, I stabilize the head, and then you want to do whatever you want, you can do. But stabilize the head. Don't do this to him, because this is not going to help his case, right? So same thing. As I'm going to do, George, I'm going to request you to stabilize his head. <coughs> so.
So as soon as I've stable, George has stabilized his head, the first thing that we can do is I talk to Samir. Samir, I'm going to remove your helmet now. Okay, I brief him on what is going to happen. If it starts hurting you at any point, tell me and I will stop. Okay? So same thing, you don't want to, you have a very clear cut line of communication with, with your victim, with your team member, that this is what we are going to do. Let's give it a try. But if it's going to cause damage, we're not going to do it. Okay? So we gently take off the helmet and <coughs> I reach inside and hold as much of his face as possible in my arms. Right? So I reach inside. George, can you let go of his shoulders and hold his helmet? Okay. So hold his head. Yeah. And start opening the helmet a bit. Okay. Open the helmet. I'm going to hold him here. Open. 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 So right. Have the neck. And I've held him in the same position. Okay. While George pulls the helmet out. So I've tried to put my arm as deep inside as possible and try to grab his head as much as possible while he does this. Now George, can you keep the helmet down and do the same thing to stabilize his head neck. Perfect. Careful. I'm going to let go now. Okay. So we do the same thing. We haven't moved his head from the position as much as possible. But we've done it as carefully as possible. We'll do it one more time. So I can show it to you. But you um, need to rest his head down now. No, no don't. So George then stays in that position. Keep it hold. George, what was the original position you'd keep it that way? But this was again only in the case if he is not breathing. And if I need to access his mouth. Or if he's got an injury where a lot of blood, especially I see oh he's got blood flowing down his face. I need to stop that blood flow on his head. Then I need to do something Last about resort. it. Last resort. Last resort. If he is okay, the doctors are trained to remove the helmet. The doctors are not trained to remove the helmet. They will cut it and no, they won't cut it. Yes. So the paramedics are trained to remove helmets and all that because the doctors. One who come with the ambulance. Yeah, the one who come with the ambulance. Doctors are uh, spoiled. They will wait for stretchers, little bit of a, this. They won't work on <coughs> emergency cases. Uh, the jugad part is all the paramedics part. So again, we're going to try it. Even once in more. this case, there's a golden hour or something. Come once more, we put the helmet on. Yes, absolutely. So same thing. First 15 minutes are the platinum period. Anything that you do in the first 15 minutes results in success in the golden hour. The first hour is called the golden hour. So if you do as much as possible in the first one hour, you're right. going to result in lives saved or lives lost. Perfect. So again, Step making right. sure as a rider you are comfortable to work is important. Riders are wearing cumbersome gear. Take your gear off as much as possible so that all of a sudden you have these big shoes that you're wearing and then you're half looking like a zombie anyway and you're trying to work on him. <laughs> it's not possible. So you rip, take your gear off, get as comfortable as possible yourself, then to do some activity. Put him down. See, you've lifted his head up. You need to go back a bit. Just support his head by holding it. Just hold it there. Just hold his head. No, no. Put both your knees down. Go back. Yeah. Hold his head. Just hold his helmet. No, hold the helmet only. No, no. Don't lift. Just hold the helmet. Oh, okay. That's it, right? So, Samir, if it's, I'm going to take your helmet off. Okay. If anything, if it starts hurting you, you're going to let me know. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go inside. What's your name? Faraz. Faraz. So, Faraz, you're going to hold his helmet. Listen, when I tell you, and sl slowly stretch it and start pulling it out. But I'm going to hold Samir's head and neck first. So, I'm going to reach as far as possible inside to get a good grip. And then Faraz, now you can slowly start pulling that helmet off. Samir, are you okay? Yeah. No, 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 don't support his head at the back. How do we support his head? Oh sorry. No, no, come lower. Uh, put your put your elbows on the ground for us. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So we leave him in the same position that he was. Thanks for us. <coughs> Thanks, Amit. That will get completely scratched. Yeah. 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 Correct. Correct. Yeah. Put, put a kapda under it, na, so uh, it, it won't get scratched. And there were these Annadi interns who were checking my leg out. And I had one piece which moved 360, 180 degrees in two axes. Thanks to that for three months I was on crutches. This is only because of bad first aid. Absolutely. So, first aid can be very, very important. <laughs> and if he's breathing, do not try to take off his helmet. 
Not required. If the paramedic comes and he's trying to take out his uh, take out his helmet, make sure it is done in the proper manner. Okay. Because now you all know how to do it. But in case you can avoid it, avoid it. It's not required. In the hospital, they'll figure out ten other ways. They might put a brace on him, or they might be extra careful. And in case it becomes worse, they know they have all the equipment to cut it to save it. They're all doctors. They're mechanics there, but we are not. So the same thing like fixing your own bike. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Right? Any any questions, guys? No questions. I hope it was useful. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. How do we attend to an accident? I mean, if I have to summarize it first, is first one. The guy needs to ensure that he is safe. So he has to see if there is no danger around. He has to then uh, allocate the responsibilities to people, put somebody on the job of clearing the traffic, take a call whether the person needs to be picked up or he has to be kept there itself, depending on what is happening around. The most important perspective on, you know, if, if he's having his helmet on, and normally in all bike rides, the person is bound to have his helmet on. How do we react to the scenario if he's not breathing and if you are able to do CPR without you know, breathing into him and keep doing CPR till he starts breathing. That is one perspective. The second thing is that you have to access this uh, bleeding somewhere in the head region and we have to then get the helmet out. Uh, that also has been covered very well. And most importantly, if you have to shift the guy from that particular spot to a safer spot. The best part is how do we pick him up without, uh, with minimal, uh, uh, in a movement in his body, how four, five people, five people can pick up. So I think this is a very important aspect as to when you are attending into an emergency. So first session we took is how do we not get into an emergency uh, by sensible, responsible riding, learning how to ride, what to ride on. It, it, it needs to be taken up like if you if you look into the saying no you don't become a doctor overnight to become a doctor you have to go to school to become a good rider too also you have to go to school so the first session covered us on how do we ride and the second session was very clear on how do we how do we react so if i go back home today though i have done my uh, first aid training before also it's become a refresher course and this needs to be periodically iterated again and again because you know people tend to forget. I did it sometime in 2016, 2017 but today I am going back a little more enlightened, a little more confident than how I can manage if, if we have this event today. So thank you very much Ankit and thank you all you guys for having that patience. Thank you very much.